Hey guys, welcome back to Danger Planet. This is Doug. I'm here with Adam. Say hi, Adam. What's up? And today we're going to talk all about Kingdom Death Monster. Get excited. Woo! So guys, welcome back to the Danger Planet. Like I said, I'm here today with Adam, and we're going to be talking all about a product that is very near and dear to Adam's heart. Uh, and actually, I've been a big fan of recently as I've been looking more and more into it, and it's actually Kingdom Death Monster. Um, so Adam, for the folks at home that might not know exactly what this game system is or the general history that's involved with at this point, uh, uh, kind of something that I would say is ingrained into the Kickstarter history of being a tabletop nerd, um, can you give us a little bit of background on what is Kingdom Death, who makes it and produces it, how long has it been around for, just like kind of the origin story of the game system? Absolutely. So Kingdom Death is a boutique tabletop roleplay game. It is produced by Adam Poots and his game design team going by the label of Team Death. It has been around on the internet since close to end of November 2012, and it was originally published as a Kickstarter at the time. Uh, originally, Poots had been only looking for about thirty-five thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken. And not only was that goal achieved within hours of putting up the original Kickstarter, but it has since like one gone, hour or something, like an hour and a half, I think, is like the timed amount. But it has gone on to the original Kickstarter and it has a second one, which is the one you would be looking at if you were to try and find it. Uh, it's raised over several million dollars of money for Poots to bring his dream to life, which is this crazy, insane board game. Uh, that also is kind of like a role-playing game at the same time. Uh, it took years upon years upon years for a lot of releases, so there are members of the community that have quite literally uh, gone through the steps of like moving on with their life before certain components of the game have gone forward, unfortunately. However, he has still brought, I believe, everything he's been um, you know required to put out that it was a Kickstarter uh, challenge requirement. Like, as people met the stretch goals, he's been working on everything. And very soon, we're going to have our hands as a community on the Gambler's Chess expansion, especially this year, which uh, I'm very, very excited for. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that are really excited for that. Would you say, Adam, at a very high level, that it's fair to categorize Kingdom Death Monster as uh, a deep strategy board game that's designed to be played by ideally four players, can be played by less, but generally it's a game all about kind of cultivating a small village having those villagers get geared up RPG style and then sending them out to like hunt specific monsters that then you get like prizes from, take back, upgrade, rinse and, re rinse and repeat. Is that a fair description for a, at like a 10,000 foot overview you feel? Yeah, that that's that's pretty close to how I would shorthand describe it if, if someone wanted to be a little bit more on the crunchy side of it as opposed to the glamorous side of it because um, because Kingdom Death is unique in, in several different ways, right? So like you said, yes, it is a cooperative board game um, with very many elements that are very similar to how you would typically want to be playing a role-playing game with your friends. Uh, specifically, and, and this is one of my favorite parts about interacting with your friends playing the game, is it has a very heavy lean on the cooperative aspect in that sense, because every single action you take in the game, as it should, has a consequence. And right. it's very important to as you're going through like the turns and certain phases of the game, you need to elaborate the logic behind what you're trying to go in and do. Because if you do not, your friends are going to be very upset very quickly if you're just like, I'm attacking this giant monster and you roll the dice. And not only do you manage to get the worst possible outcome of what you were trying to get, but you then immediately screw everyone else over. Right. And um, I think you, I think that's a really good point to make. Um, kind of to exactly what you just said. I've heard a lot of people compare the gameplay element of this um, of this experience to like the Dark Souls of board games in that like it's really hard to actually win at the game. Uh, and my take on it, having seen a, a couple of games and now done a bunch of research for this episode, is that if you're not cooperating, your group is probably going to die because the game is really, really difficult. So not only is it really pushes players to be cooperative with one another, but the gameplay is also fairly technical, is my understanding. I mean, do you think that's fair? A fair kind of statement? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, if if, if you can't uh, coordinate with your friends that you're playing this game with, absolutely. 
Absolutely. It's, it's very much so like that, facing big giant threats, trying to move in certain positions to be able to get the, get the best advantage of the weapon that you have uh, are absolutely mechanics that are in this game. That, and that's some of the other super fun parts about it. So what are games for folks that are kind of, maybe they haven't heard of Kingdom Death or they've only seen the models. I mean, you, you would say it's similar to what, like a Gloomhaven or Descent. Are there any other games that you would kind of like, if people are looking for analogies to what this system is or maybe similar experiences. But the thing that comes to mind for me the most is Gloomhaven because I think the most people have probably played that one. I kind mm -hmm. of see this game system as like a bit more technical, uh, a bit more depth of rules um, version of somebody that might have started out with like a Gloomhaven experience and really enjoyed it, but wants yeah. to dial up the complexity to the next level and wants to dial up the difficulty to the next level, but is still trying to stay in that like area of game experience. Is that do you think that's like is that on base or is what do you what do you think is that off? What do you think? Yeah, so um, an interesting thing on that specific note, it happens to interestingly if anyone who's watching this has played the Dark Souls board game, the, the fighting mechanics are very similar. Um, the main difference you'll find is that unlike in the Dark Souls board game, where when you're fighting the big giant boss, um, the deck is not static. The deck is pseudo random and is shuffled consistently, uh, which will result in a lot of varied play styles. Cause I've, I've heard a, a few times that's a complaint with the Dark Souls board game is that once you fought a boss, the pattern is set, it's done. There is no randomization. So the, you know, going back and playing it doesn't have as much value. Kingdom Death will have significantly more in that sense. Um, and, and the example of being similar to Gloomhaven, yes, because you want to be playing, uh, you know, it's, it, it is playable solo. It's a lot harder um, and a lot more boring, honestly, because I quite like the banter you'll have with your friends as you like joke about what's happening, like with the actual attacks and stuff. Well, I um, agree with you. It's like part of the part of the fun of the game is like you... The, you're going through the hunt for a monster where you have no idea what it yeah. is then you get there and you're like we don't even know how this monster attacks like you yes. go over there it's like i don't want to go over there what if what if something happens and then what if like, it shoots like, acid out of its like yeah. armpit at me or something yeah exactly um, and, I, and i think another thing that we should just touch on really quickly for folks that might not be aware you made a good point you talked about the deck and the actions of the the monster um fairly unique to kingdom death is that every monster it's not controlled by a player Monsters in this game are controlled by AI decks. Um, well, they are. That's that's the extra right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That that's a unique differentiator for some of the elements of these bosses is they've got very complex, very elaborate AI decks that are gonna dictate how a monster, how a boss monster will act, how it will attack, how it will target prioritize stuff like that, um, which I thought was really cool. Uh, and 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 it's looking at it. Um, I know, for example, Gloomhaven has AI built into the system as well, but it, yeah. not to the level that it, it seems like Kingdom Death does. I mean, I, these are full stack decks yes. for each boss monster, even starting with the initial monster, which is that lion. I mean, even yeah. that guy has a deck of like 20 or 30 cards, basically, uh, yes. that'll dictate what he's doing. So why don't, Adam, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the core phases of uh, the game in Kingdom Death Monster? Because... Kingdom Death Monster is fairly unique in that there is the battle component to it. Yeah, you will fight boss monsters, mm -hmm. but there's also the um, like the the village building part, the adventure part, the battle part, and then the upgrade part. So why don't you just walk us through in order each of those phases of the game so that folks can understand kind of how they piece together um, from a gameplay perspective. Yeah, so to kind of give an explanation for the game because getting into all the specifics are a, the whole entire process in and of itself the game consists of using a series of 10-sided dice occasionally special six-sided dice um in conjunction with as mentioned before several different decks to determine every single random variable throughout the course of the game um as you had mentioned with the monster specifically which is called the showdown phase in the game um that that particular phase is you and three other people is designed for specifically um, will be placed wherever you guys collectively would like to be placed before you actually start the fight. Um, and then you take turns being what's called the monster controller, where one of you will be the guy who basically has to be the final call on how the monster chooses to behave. And you're always supposed to think in favor of if you were the monster rather than in favor of the players, which is kind of a small distinction that is important. Um, you Before every single fight starts, there are rules regarding if the monster is X strength, develop a deck at random from the pools of cards they have 
uh, up to deck size Y, and it may have particular free um, assorted cards, like the White Lion, for example, when you first fight him, has a fully preset deck, but it's fully randomized past the very first attack he does. And it's about, I think, 12 cards. And the way that is really fun for the game is every time you hit the monster during the showdown phase, uh, you have a chance that you might actually successfully hit it. You might actually wound it. Once you've secured that hit, you then get a different deck called the hit location deck. And this is physical body parts in that monster. And they all have responses to being hit as like a crazy monster would, right? Like the, the white lion, for example, if you go to strike him across like his face, right? He's absolutely as a cat would hiss at you and try to swap back immediately. But if you manage to hurt him significantly, he's not going to know how to respond. And he's not really going to do much. Uh, and every monster has stuff kind of in that vein where they may move or they may attack you back or they may just have bizarre reactions in response to you attempting to hit them in the first place. And if you do successfully manage to injure that monster, you then take the top card of that AI deck and it's basically burned for the rest of the game. Uh, so there is even a potential chance that there's really scary attacks in a monster's deck that you'll never see because you get rid of them too fast for it to be able to whip them out at you. There's also a good chance too that like as you get through it and the big thing is once you understand what is in the deck you then run the risk of when it shuffles the deck because when it finishes it'll you know refill it um what am i gonna have to deal with like okay the light lion for example let's just say he has like two claw attacks and a bite left i hit him and now there's one gone is it a bite is it a claw i actually don't know until he flips all of the attacks again and you have to kind of try to play around that information once you've gained it in the first place and that's if you've even gone that far and survived um, and then once you've managed to successfully kill a monster in the showdown phase, assuming you do at least, uh, there's rules you go through for like giving your characters experience and the resources you get, like you mentioned, you carve up the monster bits. Then yeah, you go so, to the... So why don't we talk a little bit, uh, cause so we, we did a really good description here of the showdown phase, but I think it's also important for people to understand how the hunt phase works. Cause the hunt phase is kind of what leads up to the showdown phase. And then on the other side of the showdown phase is the settlement phase. So mm -hmm. the biggest thing about what Adam is describing here from the showdown phase where you might not see all the actions out of a monster or you might not even know all the things that it's fully capable of in this game after you defeat a monster you can always elect to go back to try to hunt it again to get things from it because the drops that the monster generates are also going to be um, not necessarily procedurally, procedurally generated and the same each time so there is value in going back but Adam, why don't we talk a little bit about the hunt phase specifically, because that's a really unique mechanic um, and how that leads into the showdown phase. And then I think uh, also talking about the settlement phase after that would help folks a little bit. Well, actually, I was going to say, I think to your point regarding like the specific uniqueness of wanting to re-elect to fight the same monster, the, the settlement phase has an important part in that once you've killed a monster, typically you'll get a settlement location based around what that monster is. So the lion gives you the catenarium, which allows you to build cat gear specifically, like new armor and weapons. And you can't build a lot of those gear pieces without killing the same monster again and again and again. And there's a little bit of nuance there, like the hunt phase specifically, when you fight the stronger versions of monsters, the way the hunt phase would work is, uh, depending on what monster you want to go against, it, you will have to physically have your characters travel so far away from the settlement and you'll have random events happen. And the hunt phase is probably the biggest amount of venturing into the world and world building you as a player will experience because it's the time you're out of the safety of your settlement and it's also the only time you're not physically focused on a giant monster in front of your face the hunt phase is you and your party take turns going one by one by one flipping these hunt uh, event cards and the hunt event cards have random events either potentially related to the monster or completely unrelated to the monster um, and you they're very varied uh, there's quite literally about a hundred plus randomized events that can happen during the hunt phase. So it's very unlikely that throughout the course of your playthrough, you're going to very often see more than like two or three repeat at all of the hunt phase events. So it's really interesting because you can have stuff ranging from your characters look down a cliff and they believe they are looking at the physical edge of the world. And then you <laughs> roll on a random event. And there's a chance that, oh, in reality, you're on the back of a giant flying monster that you don't even know what it is and you fall off. Or like uh, the back of a land turtle or something. Or and something no, crazy and, like yeah, that. that's, that, this is a literal hunt that happens in that one, or uh, event, I should say. Um, and then there's also the possibility that one of your characters just is really tripped out by it and they physically slide off the face of the earth. And that character is uh, not doing so hot for the rest of uh, the hunt phase. Yeah, the one thing which is... That, 
it's uh it's interesting you talk about all this stuff adam because i think it's one of the only games that i've ever seen where the player characters not not the people controlling the player characters but the characters from the settlement that are going out onto these expeditions mm. it almost feels like when poots was designing this game system those characters are designed to be disposable those guys are gonna die you're gonna send the next generation or the next wave right the the game yeah. is effectively measured in uh these things called lantern years and a motif that you guys will see throughout kingdom death is either characters or monsters holding lanterns um and the game is measured in these quote unquote lantern years it's measured yeah. in 30 lantern years and so that 30 year lantern cycle is tied into the gameplay cycle that Adam and I have been talking about, which is yeah. the hunt phase, which leads into the showdown phase, which leads into the settlement phase. Yeah. And then you kind of will rinse and repeat that process and you'll have player characters die in the settlement. Sometimes you'll add additional people to the settlement. Sometimes you'll armor up and upgrade your guys if they're lucky enough to come back alive. And you kind of just loop that interaction over and over. But each settlement phase could have events Adam talked about how the hunt phases could have events that could be crazy that could happen. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, if your settlement um, makes it through all of the lantern years, you'll have what's called a finale. And a finale will just be like this huge boss monster that'll show up and battle you at your settlement. And if you beat it, then you're kind of assumed to have won the game. Um, and that's kind of like the core. And I, I think the most unique thing to me is that so many of these games that I've played the creator puts an emphasis on trying to develop the character of the thing that you're controlling. And it feels like in Kingdom Death Monster, Poots has put a lot more of an emphasis on the environment that this community of kind of mm. humans finds itself in and actually has put a lot more characterization into the things that you're hunting. So like the star of the show is the monster, right? And, and when I was looking at this stuff, it kept coming back to my brain as one of my favorite old video games of all time, which is Shadow of Colossus, where like mm -hmm. the star of the show is the boss monster. Your your player character is fairly non-denominational, like um, it, almost no information on them really. But yeah. like you, you have these big mythical creatures and you have to go and you have to go and find them on the map. And then when you find them on the map, you have to fight them. But initially when you fight them, you have no freaking idea what's going on with them. Um, mm -hmm. And I think Poots had done a really interesting job of capturing that dynamic and packaging it into a really, really highly high level execution of just dark horror fantasy genre. You know mm. what I mean? Oh yeah, I know what you mean. So I mean, I, I guess my next biggest question, Adam, for you would be, what do you, what do you personally like most about Kingdom Death Monster? Like, what you, you've been a gamer for a good amount of time now. You're aware of a lot mm -hmm. of different systems. Yeah. What got you into Kingdom Death? um like initially or why do you care about it so much why are you such a big fan of it so it's a, it's a little bit of a long story but to, to shorten it a bit um way back in the day like early 2010s uh there were these guys i found on youtube called super best friends play and i fell in love with their style of content they they do like they used to do video game stuff uh where they, it was kind of like two or more people would be effectively sitting on a couch and it was kind of like if you went to see your friend's house because they're like dude i found this super weird game and i need you to sit with me and we're gonna play it so you can understand why like i'm interested in this uh and i really liked it and unfortunately in 2018 they broke up as a group um unfortunately for me i had found about six months beforehand one of the guys woolly um he had started doing is he had his own youtube channel and specifically he started doing this series he referred to as table lords and he opened it by him and three friends playing kingdom death monster and I was watching these super crazy monsters with unique mechanics and a ton of different combinations of things that I loved. And it took notes from like hyper specific things that just caught my eyes. Like I was really big into Darkest Dungeon. The game had a ton of really dark um, cosmic level horror sort of themes going on like Darkest Dungeon does. And it really caught my eye and had role play mechanics and I love role playing games. And in the note of like characters can just simply die. Another thing from Darkest Dungeon, but also kind of in a sense, you're playing that character like it's a Dungeon and Dragons game. And I had only recently found how I love D&D. &D. Um, and it was just this exact perfect storm of things that I just fell in love with watching these guys playing it. 
Um, and then I started looking in the, uh, with my ADHD, I started hyper-focusing. I was like, all right, why haven't I heard about this game? Um, what is this game? How do I get my hands on it? Why is it so expensive? I, people I actually that buy it. The ADHD rabbit hole of being an obsessive gamer. Yeah. I, I know that feeling all too well, Mr. Adam. I share yeah. that with you. Yes. I absolutely experienced that when I first saw Malifaux for the first time. And then mm. more recently, I also experienced that exact thing with Arkham Horror uh, card game. Oh my so, God. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about, yeah, man. Sure. Your brain oh. just is like, there is nothing else than this. Yeah, this it's, is the it's thing really, I will do. I'm not yeah. actively doing anything. I have to look into this. Um, I, so yeah. then I, I eventually it recessed, but I followed it on and off for a good four years from there. And then back in 2021, I actually managed to have just enough money at just the right time. Poots just put 1.6 available for order. And I was like, I have to. It's been so many years. I've been waiting for this moment. It is the time I bought a copy of the base game after having wanted the monstrosity for that four or five year period. I finally <laughs> had it in my hands. And I've, I haven't really gotten to play it, sadly, because it is such a huge commitment to move the game uh, yeah. to like play with friends. But just knowing I own it is uh, it's a huge satisfaction to me personally. Hey, man, well, I'm down to try this on some Mondays. I bet you we could rope some folks in. I bet Rich would try it with us. Probably. Now, Probably. You, bring up a, you bring up a really good point that I want to talk about, Adam. Now, I'm, it's just the elephant in the room when it comes to Kingdom Death. Uh, and I, and I got to mention it oh, yeah. talking about it. it yes. it's, an ex, it's an expensive game. I mean, Very. The, the tagline on the game on their website is 19 pounds of nightmare horror gaming. <clears throat> a thousand cards, 400 pieces of unique art, and yep. 90 like a 90 page illustration book comes yep. with almost 20 plastic miniatures just the base game and a yeah. lot of these minis are fairly large and in charge now yeah. th that's the big thing the base game itself right now it's on um version 1.6 which is kingdom death mm -hmm. monster 1.6 and it's 420 dollars for the base game mm -hmm. uh and and the way that they've structured pricing for this is they've got a couple of other unique things they release um but then they'll release effectively um, expansions and the mm -hmm. individual standalone expansions are basically they package up a new monster and a new yep. hunt and they'll put some uh, item cards in there sometimes and that'll be the expansion. So you as the consumer will you'll buy the base game and then you can kind of pick out different expansions that you like and effectively those expansions are new monsters for you to go and hunt and uh, have an encounter with. Right. But yeah. I, I, I think the, the, the other thing that we can talk a little bit about here, Adam, um, do you want to give folks a little bit of context given, because it's coming up really soon, is the stuff with the gambler's chest and how very soon in the near future, oh. there's actually going to be a big deal released. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and kind of uh, everything leading up to that? Because that's been going on. I mean, this is going to be a big deal and has been in the making for more than half a decade at this point, right? So I would love to, Doug, but there is one small caveat I'm going to put as a preface to what I'm about to go into. Um, if you are interested in a gambler's trust and you have not already been following Kingdom Death, I am sadly going to have to tell you at this point in time, I do not know how you get your hands on a copy because Boots does not have them available on the Kingdom Death site. And I am very confident in that anyone that gets an actual gambler's trust is not going to want to give it up right now. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Poots usually on black friday because that was close to when the original kickstarter happened he usually puts up a ton of content so if you are the kind of person that can hoard just a couple hundred dollars every year around black friday pop into the site close to midnight you're probably going to be able to find some really cool stuff that you might be interested in and i would feel comfortable that there's a good chance that would be your opportunity to get your hands on a gambler's trust yeah and now, once it re once it releases and and it gets out past the initial publication like the initial production i'm sure people will be able to order it online but they may you're right i mean that's a good call out people might have to wait a year or two till yeah. that's in normal production but why don't why don't you give folks why don't you give folks the what is a gambler's chest what how long has it been around for why is this such a big oh, deal man. you know um it is probably one of the biggest stretch goals that anyone has had on their mind since the second kickstarter i believe i don't remember because i wasn't following at the time unfortunately um if it was on the first kickstarter but it was this whole thing poots was going to put out and it was going to be a massive just added expansion initially but throughout the course of the past years and including issues with shipping through the pandemic poots has evolved what the gambler's chest is so now presently the gambler's chest i am extremely excited for because i luck i luckily do have one coming for me um it's set to release this year between quarter two and quarter three 
and it is functionally a complete overhaul of the game, but it's still kind of an expansion. It features a new campaign with a full new slew of monsters, including the Gambler and the King, both of which have been referenced in several different lore bits on the cards. And I, I am very excited for the King. I don't know if you've seen, um, Kingdom Death is one of the few board games you'll find that has an over 100 millimeter size model base that's used currently for two models, which is the Phoenix from the core game and Gorm from our expansion. There are three new monsters in the Gambler's Chest that use a 100 millimeter base model. And I don't know if you ever held a 100 millimeter base model <laughs> in your hands, but it's ridiculous. It's yeah. crazy. The but uh, and aside from that, and, and the details on these models. So for we, we're going to be putting up models in the background, you know, as, as we're having this, so you guys will yeah. see it. But Kingdom Death Monster has a very specific visual style. Um, it's got some, you know, uh, NA seventeen plus content on a lot of the monsters. I said before that a reoccurring motif are, are those soul lanterns. Uh, yeah. Another reoccurring motif, I guess, could be aptly described as male Beauty. and female, male and female genitalia in yeah. large amounts in different, uh, different uh, representations, effectively. Um, yeah. So, so, so it definitely, and that's not to say it's bad. It's a specific art style. Um, it is. But it, I, I would not say that this game is for uh, a, a 10 or 11 or a 12 year old um, trying to understand board gaming. I would say the yeah. the target yeah. audience on this is really more, you know, um, folks that have been around the block, board gamers that are looking for kind of dark, gritty fantasy and horror and uh, are OK yeah. with some uh, some monster boobies in their face, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, personally, uh, I will specifically make a call at this point. I am not a fan of the full model of the Sunstalker, nor am I a fan <laughs> of the Wet Nurse. Those are not super great models, in my opinion. Generally, you're okay with a lot of this stuff, but you're right. There's a, this, it's- It's a specific style. It's yeah, fine. It's, it's slightly tasteful, slightly tasteless. Depends on which one we're referring to at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a style. He Poots has, yeah. Poots has gone with a very specific style. And if you like that type of style, it's well executed. He's done it really, really well. Just yeah. a little bit of a forewarning so that folks don't think that this is a game for, you know, a, a younger echelon, echelon of audience here. Um, no, and, and, and I guess just to wrap up, I mean, the, the Gambler's Chest is really exciting. I was excited about it, reading about it, prepping for this episode. And, and I'm very new to the world of Kingdom Death outside of just hearing about Kingdom Death because I know that their model quality is really high. And I know that a lot of people in the miniature painting community try to really go after these models, yeah. not even to play the game. There's a lot of people that will try to acquire Kingdom Death models so that they can paint them and, for example, enter them into local painting competitions. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that I know that don't even play Kingdom Death. All they do is collect it and they see it as a mm. collector's item. So I know a couple of buddies that have <laughs> more than $1,000 of sealed Kingdom Death product in their closet hanging out and it, they just consider it an a investment. Sealed? Wow. That's, yeah, they don't even open it. Yeah, they just, Fair it's, enough. It, it's just sealed in their closet and they just consider it kind of like an investment. Um, kind of like when I bought the sealed collector's pack of the 40 K CDH stuff, they just, Oh yeah. They buy it, they put it away. Um, okay. so, so the big things, I guess the last question that I have for you, Adam is around trying to get people into this game system, trying to get them feeling more comfortable with kingdom death monster in general. My take on the game system is that this is really designed for, folks that like i said they might have played a game like gloomhaven and they're ready to turn it up to 11 or 12 or 25 in this yeah. particular case <laughs> right so it's a, the advice that i i guess i would have would be like just understand that it's a bit more of a technical game it's probably aimed at a, a bit more of a mature audience and mm -hmm. how it's how it's produced and how it's sold is as a premium limited edition product that's really meant to be in a higher price bracket. I mean, those, yeah. I guess, would be my biggest tips for somebody just looking to get into the game or just looking to get into Kingdom Death. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you, you've you learned as a slightly newer gamer getting your hands on the Kingdom Death system? Any bits of wisdom that you might have for folks that are trying to educate themselves about, you know, poofs and the general Kingdom Death dynamic and what's going on with this? Any bits of advice? Yes, so uh, I will say if you are one of the few people that's going to be watching this that is interested in getting into it, try to figure out a storage solution before you buy. The box is fine for the core game, but if you want to sleeve it up and make sure it stays protected to protect your investment, 
you're going to have a different situation where the box will not work efficiently for you very quickly. Uh, and making sure you can store this game is very important because the box is really big and it's it's very difficult to have a spot in your house to put it. So if you don't have a dedicated gaming room, really consider that before you buy anything in this, if you are going to buy. But if you're someone who's not necessarily sure what they want to do, um, if you want some advice, a wonderful community that I've looked at, I haven't really participated in very much because I'm more of a lurker. Um, if you go to the Kingdom Death subreddit, it is community driven. Poots is, I don't believe, active in there. I haven't really seen him say anything because he's very busy with everything going on with the gambler's chest. Um, but you can get a lot of people in the community that are actually super happy to answer questions from rulings, how they take care of their game, how they play their models, etc. There's also, if you are someone, like you had mentioned before, a collector and you're interested in just collecting Kingdom Death, maybe you don't want the over $400 core game, which is fair, right? There is um, kdm-collector.com. That is a great website that has every model that has been officially put through by Poots, where you can also see people's individual collections. So it's an easy way to share instead of having to use like an Imgur uh, gallery of your pictures. Um, however, if you are interested in playing and it's out of the question for you to get the core game and you don't necessarily want to follow the community, two ways that you can actually play the game online. The official method that Poots currently has that isn't available for purchase right now is the Kingdom Death Simulator, which you can get off the Kingdom Death website. He has said that he plans to open keys up again during Black Friday. So that is going to be another, you have to wait a year. It's pretty atmospheric and it's kind of cool, but it's a little limited right now. So I'm I'm looking forward to that so heavily. Honestly, yeah, dude, I think that's- I got that four pack. So yeah, we'll, we'll be showing it here. It'll, it'll yeah, happen. I, I think that that's what's going to push me over the edge into playing with you. And, and the reason why I say that folks is just when you get into this game, what you'll see is there's a lot of bits and bobs. There's a lot of different decks. There's yeah. a lot of different things to manage. What I'm really excited oh, about is trying the digital version, which is uh, the simulator that Adam is talking about, is very similar to like an in-house TTS mod, basically, which will yeah. allow you to play Kingdom Death Monster digitally, which mm -hmm. means that you don't have to do any of the accounting because no. it'll be done through the uh, interface for you. Well, you'll have to do minor accounting, but you get what I'm saying. No, you don't have to manage the I'm, box and stuff. I, you, you have to manage the boxes. I've, I've been Manually? playing on it. Yes, unfortunately. Oh, spicy. Yeah. So there's a little bit of automation and shuffling at least, but uh, the just like the other usage, which is the tabletop simulator, unfortunately, yeah. uh, it's not fully automated. And I believe Poots has it like that because it's mostly used to play test content for him and Team Death to get things done more easily. And I have to admit, it definitely has seemingly worked for them because they have been able to ramp up content production, which is great. But if you're looking for an automated process, uh, you would actually want to go to the unofficial channels through Tabletop Sim. There are several different community mods that exist. I've been using the one by RHED because it's the most updated one that has 1.6 content. And that version is completely automated to the point where you oh, can just yeah, pick up a monster, put it on a thing, and it will set up the entire board for you. It's, it takes a lot of, as you mentioned, the bookkeeping. That is another thing with Kingdom of Death, that you do have a ton of bookkeeping. And if you don't like that level of crunch, you're probably not going to necessarily want to do physical or the official simulator. But I've played it on TTS. I have over, I think, 100 hours in TTS, and 80 of it is just Kingdom of Death, to be completely honest. <laughs> That's um, awesome. <laughs> it, is, it is so nice on TTS. And, and Poots doesn't like that, but unfortunately, if his product gets up to level to be equally with Spiff of what the community mods are, then I will have different things to say. But unfortunately, with the status of the simulator not being available for a lot of folks, but Tabletop Simulator is, if you're interested and you don't want to do a $400 investment, but 20 bucks isn't that bad, get a group of friends, everyone will buy a copy of Tabletop Sim, give it a shot, see if you like it. And if you do, you are actually in luck if you're watching this video shortly after release, because right now, you have a very rare opportunity to buy all the Kingdom Death expansions. I kid you not, <laughs> I've been watching this for, as I for... said, over four years. This doesn't happen. Yeah. Oh, and just so folks know, um, uh, TTS is Tabletop Simulator. It's an open source client that allows people to make mods or sometimes just full clients uh, that simulate board games or war games. And yeah. they have it on Steam. So if you have a Steam account, you can go and you can buy what's called Tabletop Simulator. It's a it's a large open source portal client. And then effectively what'll happen is then you'll just go and search by the like game system 
So for example, they have like a bunch of Warhammer 40k stuff on TTS. They've got a bunch of Age of Sigmar stuff. They've got Malifaux mm -hmm. on there. Uh, yeah. They've got Arkham Horror LCG on there even. They do. Um, they do. Uh, but I didn't, Adam, I, di I didn't even know that they had a fan a fan made one of this so that's yes like, uh, it, if that if that's automated I'm, I'm gonna use that one it is fully automated yes uh and yeah. if you're curious how to acquire it uh in the tabletop simulator workshop specifically that's where you would find like a good other good examples too there is a bunch of really nice board games that people have gone through the labors of love to make them easy accessible because yeah. during the pandemic a lot of people started using it for obvious reasons right um and people are still putting games on there which is great because it makes things more accessible for people but you go yeah, to the yeah. workshop search kingdom death uh search for it by RAGD, like I specified, and you'll find the one that I've been using that is currently up to date to 1.6 and super easy to use. So then I guess my last question for you, Adam, is, I mean, and we already kind of naturally got into this here. Any, are there any other online resources that you would suggest for people that are new that are just trying to either educate themselves about Kingdom Death or just starting out playing Kingdom Death and maybe want to get better at the game system so that when they show up with their friends, they know all the fancy tricks? anything that you think would be a good resource for a very new or a prospective kingdom death player to check out so like i mentioned uh the subreddit is probably if you're someone who likes to be active in community it's a great way to find out more about the game and possibly learn about some of the history of the publication history if that sounds interesting for you uh as for advancing your your gameplay tactics that's a little bit trickier the only way you really get better with Kingdom Death is becoming more familiar with the monsters due to the randomized nature. So if you've had one or two bad experiences, I just I the most advice I would say is honestly, uh, put a little bit of sugar with the medicine to help it go down and give it another try. But if you have a good old, you know, three tries, you're out. That's completely fair. Uh, as for people that do like it and they want to improve, same thing. Honestly, uh, probably a good call actually if you have tabletop sim or if you're playing a physical copy yourself repeat the fight and do shuffle the decks more because then you'll see more variables you'll see more randomness uh or even after you finish a fight just reset to before you started and remake the monster deck like i mentioned the decks are semi-random so if you do that you could have a good chance of more variables and see possibly see new attacks you haven't encountered um there if you are someone who likes the lore and surprise though definitely like just only play with your friends Keep the experiences new to yourself. Uh, I will admit, in my many hours of playing, I, we've reset the campaigns we were playing five different times. We have not made it to the first final boss, uh, unfortunately. We have fought the final final boss just for fun. And uh, even with some really stacked gear setups that I made for everyone, we, we that was a fun fight, but it was hard. We, we still almost died. This game is difficult, so do not beat yourself up. Just focus on trying to talk to your friends more about what you want to do before you commit to anything. Yeah, and, I, I yeah. think that's I think that's a really good general takeaway. The game is really fun. It's got great models. It's very complex. It's difficult, but it's I think like you know I think it's like a marquee experience that even if you never get to play it, you should at least check it out and kind of be aware of it because it's taking complex TTRP role playing and table topping and just cranking the knob as far into the extreme zone as possible so much of this game is all about extreme the art style is very extreme the yeah. monster design is very extreme the way that you're just meant to throw all of your player characters through a meat thresher and just expect yes. huge amounts of your settlement to die is very extreme um yeah. it's a it's got a lot of uh it's got a lot of like um di I, I keep saying it but like dialed up to 11 style about it and i think that that's that, true that's why yeah, I think that that in part is why a lot of people have started to be really interested with this game. I mean, the game now has had a following for since 2012. So this is not a new game mm -hmm. system. It's just a very specific niche component of kind of how I would categorize it. And I think the yeah. other thing that makes it really interesting is that the model quality and the designs of these monsters are so good that, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of people that buy this product either to just collect it or so yeah. that they can paint it. They don't even care about playing the game system. Mm -hmm. um, so, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that. This is uh, me and Adam's kind of first episode covering Kingdom Death. We wanted to make this so that we could give people context for the game system. I've, I've even personally gotten a lot of questions about what is Kingdom Death? How does it play as a game system? 
Um, and so we wanted to address that, give us kind of a, give you guys Adam's thoughts on the game system as a person who's kind of uh, had it for a while now and really enjoys it. And I, you know, like I would expect to see some, some more content from us coming soon. If you guys have any questions about the game system, if you guys have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see us make around Kingdom Death content, let us know in the comments. Um, and also head over to our Discord. We are going to have a newly uh, a newly minted uh, Discord sub channel for Kingdom Death, uh, and Adam is going to be one of the primary mods on it. So take a look, guys, and uh, stay tuned to the planet. We'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye.